Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on experimental techniques. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, how to create and what the uses are of artificial lipid bilayers. Okay, so an art, uh, we know, of course, that um, all cells are surrounded by a lipid bilayer, uh, and um, all the membrane-bound proteins uh, sit within the lipid bilayer. So therefore, in order to investigate the properties of these membrane-bound proteins, it's very useful to be able to create artificial lipid bilayers, basically, uh, so that we can uh, then experiment with them. Okay, right, so how do you create an artificial lipid bilayer then? Well, basically, what you do is you take a tank of water, so let's say this is a tank filled with water here, so this has got water in it, and basically what you do is you add phospholipids into this water. Now, phospholipids have uh, an odd structure, they have a polar head, and then they have two hydrophobic tails coming out. So I'll just remind you of what this, what this um, little um, diagram here actually relates to. So basically, the structure of a phospholipid is as follows. It's based around the structure of glycerol. So here is a um, glycerol molecule. Glycerol consists of three carbons, and then it has uh, a hydroxyl group coming off each of these carbons, okay? Now, in the true glycerol, of course, uh, these hydroxyl groups would have their hydrogens on, because at the moment, I've, the way I've drawn them, they're not even hydroxyl groups. But in a phospholipid, what's going to happen is these hydroxyl groups are going to bind to things. So basically, these two hydrophobic tails, those are long-chain carboxylic acids, uh, esterified with these hydroxyl groups, the first and second hydroxyl groups of um, the glycerol molecule. So here are two long-chain carboxylic acids bound here. The old name, or the biochemist's name for long-chain carboxylic acids is free fatty acids. So those are esterified to those first two, um, those two, first two, um, that they're, they're esterified to those first two hydroxyl groups of the glycerol molecule. So, long carboxylic acids. Okay, right. Now, uh, to turn it into a phospholipid, this is a diacylglyceride at the moment. It's two uh, acyl groups bound to glycerol. So, to turn it into a, a phospholipid, what you have to do is add a phosphate group onto this third hydroxyl group over here. And this is the structure of a phosphate group. So, overall, what you now have is uh, two, uh, two long-chain carboxylic acids esterified to the first two hydroxyl groups of a glycerol molecule, and then a phosphate group uh, linked to the uh, third hydroxyl group of our glycerol molecule. Now, these two long-chain carboxylic acids, their tails are represented by these long hydrophobic tails. The polar head of the phospholipid comes from this phosphate group over here, which has the negative charge. Now, so um, this group up here is very, very polar and will interact very favourably with water molecules which are also polar. Whereas these long chain carboxylic acids, those are not very polar at all and they don't interact very energetically favourably with water molecules. Instead, they interact very nicely with oxygen in the air and nitrogen in the air, which are extremely non-polar molecules. So in air, 79% uh, is nitrogen, 21% approximately is oxygen. So you have these two molecules uh, in air, and these are obviously not polar. Simply by symmetry, they cannot be polar, because the, they've got the same atom, basically, on either end of the bond. So, uh, these long-chain carboxylic acids interact far more favourably with these uh, molecules in air than they do with water molecules. So, when you mix phospholipids in with water, what ends up happening is that you form a layer on the top of the water, like so. So, all the phospholipids basically end up forming this layer right at the top, where the polar heads face down uh, to the water below, because they can interact favourably with the water. And all these long hydrophobic tails, those face up to the air to interact with the nitrogen, um, the nitrogen and the oxygen molecules that are in the air, because those are non-polar. 
okay? And down here we have the water molecules. Okay, so obviously this is not drawn to scale. <laughs> These molecules are not a comparable size to the size of the actual beaker that they are in. Uh, but the point is that when you put in phospholipids into a, um, a um, beaker containing water, they form this layer at the top where the hydrophobic tails stick out towards the air above and uh, the polar heads uh, interact with the water below. So these are the polar heads of the phospholipids. Right, okay, so how does this help with us creating an artificial lipid bilayer? Well, basically, what we can do is we can take a glass pipette, so let me show you. You take a glass pipette, like so. So here's a, the tip of a glass pipette. So this is the tip of a glass pipette. And basically you stick it down into, uh, this, uh, med uh, into this beaker, basically. So this is a tip of a glass pipette. And what you do is you also uh, fill your glass pipette with water. So your glass pipette needs to be filled up with water, so it's got water inside it, okay? So you stick your glass pipette down into this beaker, and what's going to happen, you're going to hit this phospholipid by, uh, well, sorry, not the, this layer of phospholipids. So, um, and what ends up happening is if we draw the pipette in here, here's the pipette, you end up taking out a whole layer, uh, you know, a little layer of phospholipids here. So, what happens Initially, this is what happens. You'll have your glass pipette like so, and you'll have the water maybe pushed in a little bit, and now you've got these phospholipids here. Okay? And at the moment, we haven't pulled the um, glass pipette out of the beaker. So at the moment, it's still in this beaker. So the beaker is here, let's say. So the glass pipette is still in the beaker at the moment. Now, when we pull it out, what's going to happen? Well, let's show what happens. Um, if here's the glass pipette again, well now, what this, this portion down here is in contact with air, and this portion is filled with water. So, these phospholipids aren't going to remain in this same orientation, because at the moment their hydrophobic tails are going to be facing water, and their polar heads are going to be facing now air. So, when it was still in the beaker, of course, these polar heads were now still facing water, so water was down here, basically. But as soon as you pull it out of the beaker, these polar heads will now be facing air, and they're going to realign themselves so that the polar heads are facing the water in the glass pipette, and the hydrophobic tails are facing the air, basically. Okay, so again, this is our glass pipette. Right, so the... Uh, phospholipids reorient themselves so that the polar heads are facing the water in uh, the glass pipette and the hydrophobic tails are facing the air over here. Okay, now what you do is you stick your pipette back into this beaker and get another layer of phospholipids. So what happens now is you stick your pipette back into the beaker like so and it's already got this single layer of phospholipids which are now oriented in this direction like so. And now you're sticking it back into this glass beaker with this layer of uh, phospholipids like so, with all the hydrophobic tails sticking out towards the air and the polar heads sticking down towards the water. So here comes our glass pipette for a second time, and here it goes into that beaker. Right, so this is our beaker. Okay, and there is water below these phospholipids, remember. Okay, so um, what you're going to end up getting is when you pull your pipette out again, what you will get in the tip of your pipette is you will now have this phospholipid bilayer, basically. So you'll have one layer of phospholipids where the polar heads are facing in towards the water within the glass pipette, like so. And then you'll have another layer of phospholipids uh, where their hydrophobic tails are interacting with the hydrophobic tails of um, the first layer of phospholipids, and the polar heads are now facing out towards the air. And you might say, but oh, don't the polar heads not like air? Well, the polar heads prefer air to, if they orient in the opposite direction, they'd be facing this hydrophobic tails of the other phospholipids, and that's not energetically favorable. It's far, they take the best option, basically, and the best option 
is for their hydrophobic tails to interact with the hydrophobic tails of the first layer up here and for the polar heads to then face out towards the air. Okay, so what you have created in this tip of this glass pipette is a phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so that is how one would go about creating a phospholipid bilayer artificially. So, uh, in the next video, we'll have a look at how you can actually use uh, phospholip artificial phospholipid bilayers to investigate uh, membrane-spanning proteins.